Hello, my love. Okay, welcome to the podcast. I have not done a podcast around the five ways to become more confident in a very long time. And I wanted a refresher because the first episode I ever did on this show, ever, is our most popular download, How to Build More Confidence, The Five C's. And it hurts my soul because the audio was not good. Like the audio was not good. And now we're all like fancy schmancy and the audio is amazing and I wanted to redo it. I also want to gift you something. So this episode that you are listening to right now comes with a free gift. If you want to claim this free gift, I'll tell you what it is. It's a cheat sheet, five steps to create confidence, a downloadable PDF. You can type into it or you can download it and print it full color. It's got every step that I'm going to go through in this episode on how to build confidence. Number one. Number two, you also have a video series. So there are five videos from me to you. They are short and they're snappy. If you ever wanted me in your pocket, like just telling you off and believing in yourself shorter than this podcast, those videos, it's called Confidence Mastery Video Series. I have sold this in the past before. This is connected to this amazing free thing that I'm going to give you, this gift for this episode. Here's how you get it. You have to go to my Instagram and type me the word kit, K-I-T. It's a confidence queen's kit. I'm giving this away. If you have not downloaded this, go get it. Just send me a DM private message on Instagram or comment on any of my post K-I-T and I will send you this free kit. It is amazing. It's a free download and it's going to help you build confidence. Okay, let's get into the episode, shall we? Okay, so I want to share something. I wrote this book, Confidence Feels Like Shit in 2020 and you know what was happening back then. I was home. I was writing this book, me and my husband, he was helping me and 11 chapters on the truth about confidence and what it really takes to create it. And would you believe that in that book, I didn't put the definition of confidence. And so now when I go off and I speak in front of stages and rooms of people or run my own events, I always bring this up. And so I wanna share this with you. If you are someone who wants to build confidence, if you wanna be more confident in yourself, have more self-confidence in what you do and in how you show up, I want you to know this. Here is the reality. The definition of confidence that I love that has helped me the most since writing that book is the old Latin root word of confidence, which stands, uh, which basically is confidentia, right? And it basically means self-trust. The root word, the definition of confidence, what it really means is self-trust. In Spanish, I speak Spanish. Si tú hablas español, ya tú sabes that the word confidence in Spanish is confianza, which literally means trust. There's no word in Spanish. I think it's autoconfianza, which means like self-trust. But the word confianza, which is similar to the Latin word, is trust. So when you say, I don't have confidence, I need to build my confidence, what you're saying is you need to build your trust. You need to trust yourself more. And by doing that, you will then become more confident. So I want to give you a really tangible and very easy example. I want this to be easy for you, right? What is a way right now, where, where are you in your life breaking your self-trust? Where are you breaking trust with yourself? Where are you not keeping your word to yourself? Where are you not doing what you said you would do? I'll give you an example. So it's winter here in Australia and it is so cold. It's winter technically in June. So it's not even winter yet, but it is freezing and it's pitch black. Like 6 a.m. is pitch black. Like it looks like it's midnight. It's cold. It's very easy for me to be like, oh, I'm tired. I want to sleep a little bit more and just hit that snooze. And I have, by the way, like I was doing that. And this morning I was like, or last night I said to myself, okay, you are not about to break trust with yourself. So tomorrow morning, your ass is going to get up at 6.15. And Erica Kramer, you are not going to snooze. And I thought to myself, if I do what I said I would do, even though this is small, this is nothing, it's snoozing, your alarm, I'm going to build more confidence with myself. And right now, shit is so crazy, I could use more confidence. So what did I do? My alarm went off, 6.15, I jumped my ass out of bed, and I got ready and I went to the gym. And I know it sounds like nothing, but guess what that did for me? What I say, I do. I keep my word to myself and I don't break trust with myself. So here's something for you to think about before we get into the five steps. Where are you currently breaking your trust? 
What are you saying yes, but you really mean no? Where are you like, I'm going to do that, and then you don't freaking do it? Where you say, oh, I'm going to do this, and you talk about it, but you're not being about it, and you're not doing it. Find where you do that in your life. And the next little tip that I have for you is create a way to keep your word to yourself right now. Do the thing that you say you're going to do. If you said you're done drinking and you're not going to drink this weekend, don't. If you're like, I'm done smoking, do not smoke again. If you're like, I'm done in this relationship, you are done. None of this texting back and forth and playing ping pong with your mofos, right? Like you're done. So I really want to encourage you to do that because when I found out the definition of confidence was self-trust and I spoke to Gary Vee on the podcast, he's amazing. And he was like, what? What's this definition? I never heard of that. And a lot of people haven't heard of it. And when I hear it, it really makes confidence more accessible. And when I speak to audiences and I'm like, doesn't that feel more accessible to you? You can create confidence because you can learn to trust yourself. And everyone's like, yes. So if you have struggled with self-confidence, just that alone that is gonna support you, okay? We we'll won't get into this. So I studied confidence for, fuck, since I was a hairdresser back in the day. 2005, I became a hairdresser, my friend, okay? So I've been in the world of building confidence for women in particular for almost 20 years. That's wild, right, to think about that. If you're watching this on YouTube, yes, I am 40. Oh my God, I'm gonna be 41 this year. I hope I get the J-Lo like Puerto Rican Latina skin. Let's just hope that that happens. Anyway, so confidence for a very long time. And when I've been doing this work with confidence, I was really working with the external side of confidence. And let me tell you, the external is important, right? When I speak and I do my Creating Confidence Masterclass, I talk about the external confidence and internal confidence. And I always ask the audience, what do you think is more important? And external is like your hair, your makeup, the way you look, the way you smell, your image, and then the internal confidence is the way you think the beliefs that you hold about yourself your values your inner world and everyone thinks that the inner world is more important but let me just go ahead and tell you they're both important both of these things are important as a hairdresser as a fashion stylist as someone who helped women on the outside feel confident it is so important I mean think about it when you feel like you look your best when you feel, not when other people think you look good, but when you're like, I look good, I feel good, I like my hair, I like what I'm wearing, even if I'm in like a sweater, I like my earrings, I like my nails, whatever. When you feel good about the way that you look, doesn't that change your outcome? Doesn't that change the way you show up in your day? Doesn't that change your energy, the way you start thinking, the way you feel, the actions that you take, which impacts the results that you get? So no shade to looking cute, like we wanna look cute. But also, that can't be the only thing. And this is why I stopped styling, because I would dress women and they would look amazing and they'd be like, I hate myself. I don't think I'm good enough. I'm this, I'm that, and I'm like, what? So we need both. The internal confidence is foundational, is long lasting. I find that that gets you through anything. I could look like, like I don't have my nails on. I'm still writing my book. I'm about to hand in the manuscript of book number two. Uh, at the end of the month. So I've been writing and let me tell you, it's making me feel all kinds of things looking at my little like shabby ass fingers because I just don't have cute hands. Like you don't get everything, okay? And I know my hands and my toes, I wasn't blessed with that, but that's okay. So I'd be putting on my nails and I feel so good when I look at my hands, I don't bite my nails, it helps me. But for the little while, I haven't been able to. Like the last month, I haven't had nails on and it's driving me bananas. And so I'm like, okay, what do I need to do? I need to do my little tan. I need to blow dry my hair. I need to put makeup on. I want to feel good because if not, I'm t it fucks with me. It messes with my confidence. So I'm just telling you, it is very important. When we get into the practice of confidence, which are the five C's, and researching women, like all kinds of women around the world, famous people, people of influence, people you look up to, people I look up to, what is it that they do? What is it that a confident person, air quotes, does that makes them confident? And in this free download, all you gotta do is DM me on Instagram or Facebook or wherever, the word kit, K-I-T, and you'll get this free download. What we realized and what we noticed is that there are certain things that air quotes confident people do. That when you do this, you too build the trust with yourself and build the confidence. We're about to break it down. Number one, the first thing that confident people do is they're constantly making choices. They know that they have decisions to make and they make them. 
We are not procrastinating up in here. Confident people make decisions all the time. Let me tell you, this month I got decision fatigue. I was like, there's too many decisions to make. But we are constantly making the choice that we need to make as opposed to procrastinating, putting it aside, being overwhelmed, not taking action, not making a decision, being an indecision. Confident people make decisions. And when you want to step into your confidence, you need to realize that you have a choice. There is choice. And that's the first step of confidence, choice. What choices do you have? What choices are you choosing? Is there a decision? Is there a choice that you need to make and you haven't made yet? In regards to your work, in regards to your business, in regards to your health and well-being, in regards to your relationship, what is something that you are avoiding and not going for, not making a decision on? Because here's the thing, confident people are constantly making decisions. They're choosing what they're doing. They don't get overwhelmed with choice. They just make a choice. There's no bad choice, by the way. The bad choice is you not doing it. You can't make a bad choice because I have went the air quotes wrong way so many times in my life only to find myself exactly where the fuck I need to be. Only to find myself exactly where I need to be. So question one is, what's a choice that you need to make that you haven't made, but you know you need to make it? Think about that. That's it, number one. Number two is courage. When I look to the most confident people in the world, they are courageous, which means, by the way, they're scared as hell, but they're going anyway. I did my TEDx talk and I told y'all about it. Let me tell you, I was not courageously confident when I did that TEDx talk. I was shitting myself. I was so scared. My stomach had the butterflies. I kind of thought I was going to pass out on stage. I really didn't know what was going on. It was like a blackout. I was so nervous, but I knew that I was going to be okay. And I knew that I needed to do it because I knew that I cared about it. Courage is an important part of being confident. You're brave. You put yourself out there and you do it. Courage doesn't mean that you're not scared. Courage doesn't mean that you don't lack Courage doesn't mean that you're not worried about it. No, like courageous people are just as scared as you and I, but they're willing to do it anyway. And that's how they build confidence, by the way, by going, I'm walking in the dark. If I step on a rock, oh well, and I bump my head and fall over, oh well. Or I might not, and I might learn how to walk in the dark really well, but I'm going anyway. Either way, I'm doing this. The things that are important to you, if you really wanna be who you say you wanna be, you have to do the scary stuff. You cannot keep yourself comfortable thinking you're going to grow. If I don't water that damn plant back there, if it doesn't get sun and nutrients and water, it is not growing. And it's probably got growing pains like me and you. We have to continuously grow and evolve. And so you have to step into the shit that you're scared of, the courage, build it up, go out there and do it. That's number two. Confident people step into their courage. Okay, next up is number three. This one is so important, it's called create, AKA you make moves. So confident people create, right? They are constantly figuring out how they can move towards that big decision that they made. It's basically like you take a small action. What are you creating in your world? What are you doing in order to step into your confidence? If you look at anyone who is confident, they're constantly moving and doing shit. It could look tiny, it could be a small action, a small step towards that big decision that you made. Let's say you wanna quit your job. Let's say you wanna start your business. Let's say you need to leave a relationship that does not serve you. Okay, cool, that's the choice. I gotta leave this relationship. Number two, I'm scared as hell. Like courage, I'm scared. High five, let's keep going. Number three, create. What's the thing that you need to do? What's the small step that you need to take? Sometimes there's not an action to take. Sometimes you have to create a bridge. Sometimes you have to create a way. Sometimes you have to create a collaboration. Sometimes something comes and you're like, shit, that's it right there, I gotta do that. But step three, what is the small step that you can take towards making this happen for yourself? We're constantly evolving, moving, shifting, finding ways. You are a creator, my friend. You create your world, you create everything. In step three, create, this is where you're like, okay, I wanna do that big thing, I'm scared as hell, what do I need to do? What's my first small step? And here's where I, I find really helpful. I wanna write a book, shit, that's huge. Okay, what's one small thing I can do? Let me do like a mind map, let me brainstorm my ideas. Let me email someone. 
Okay, let me tell my audience. Okay, now let me find the name of the book. Now let me start writing two pages. Now five pages. Like small tiny steps to get you to do that big scary thing that you want to do. That's what we're talking about in number three, create. Number four, consider. So I don't know about you, but I've done shit in my life and I have not done well. Oh, I've been like, damn, that sucked. Like right now, if I was to tell you about my TEDx talk and I go to consider, which is like evaluate basically how I did. So how did I do? How was my creation? How was my action? I would say to you, damn, I wish I wasn't so scared for my TEDx. I wish that I didn't get into my head so much because I feel like I was so worried about doing a good job memorizing, saying it correctly, that I don't think I did my best. I did the best I could do with what I had. I totally worked my ass off and did the best I could do. But now looking back in hindsight, if I consider, I'm like, damn, where could I have done better? How could I have done that better? It wasn't a failure, it was a lesson. I learned a lot about myself doing that. So when you do consider, which is step four, after you create an action, after you do something, how did you do? How did you go? Evaluate your behavior, evaluate your action, evaluate your step. Some people fall down and they stay down. They go, oh, I suck, I can't do this. I'm not confident. I'm not good at public speaking. Oh, I'm just not good at raising my hand at work. I'm never gonna do that again. Oh, I suck at showing up on an Instagram live. I'm never gonna do that again. Oh, I don't know how to have difficult conversations, so I'm not gonna set boundaries anymore. No, you fall down, you get your ass back up. So evaluate is all about you going, okay, how was that? How was the action I took? If it was not good, you get an opportunity to learn what was not good about that. This is where people say fail, by the way. I don't say fail. How are you gonna fail? You can't fail. All that happened was that you learned that what you did didn't work. And how you did it wasn't the correct way for you to do it. So there's a better way. So you learned something. You got a degree in a lesson as opposed to you going, oh, I failed. I never say fail because if I say I failed, then I'm a failure. And I don't know about you, but that feels not great. Does it make me feel like, yay, I'm a failure. Let's do this again versus going, okay, that sucked. <laughs> I learned that that's not the way to do it. Fantastic. What's the next thing I can do? Let me take that lesson, put it into my next action, and I'm going to be better for it. You're actually better when you do fall down and make mistakes. You become better. If you don't make any mistakes, you're not great. I'm sorry, but what do you know? How are you gonna learn without making mistakes? So step four is all about taking those mistakes, learning from them, and doing better next time. The last step, number five, the final step of the practice of confidence is continue. So confident people fall down, like I just said in step four, and they get their ass back up. They get back up and they go again. What's the next choice I need to make? All right, I'm standing in my courage. What's a step that I can create? What's a small step towards that? Fantastic, how did I do? Let me evaluate, let me consider. Good, all right, let's go again. And they move through the practice of confidence so swiftly, so quickly, so smoothly, you don't even know. But if you evaluate what they're doing, if you break it down and slow motion it, Confident people are really making choices. They're making decisions, the big stuff. They are not procrastinating on the big stuff. They are not getting overwhelmed with, oh, I could do so many things. That's you buying time for no reason, by the way, because it only hurts you. Don't worry about which decision, just do something. Okay, cool, I did it, I'm so scared, courage. Number three, what's a small step towards making that happen? What's the tiny, small thing you can do? This will help you so much with overwhelm. Number four, that action you took, how was it? Was it good? Fantastic, keep going. Was it shit? Readjust, uh, readjust the plane. Move a little bit that way, move a little bit over there. Fantastic, go again. If you fall down, number five is continue, you gotta get back up. And if you don't get back up, you stay down. People stay down for years. People stay down for years, they're like, oh, I fell five years ago and I never got back up. And I'm like, okay, why? People fall all the time. Listen, I fall, nobody sees me fall because I'm up, I'm up. I'm like hitting the floor quickly because I wanna go again because I know that this is what it's about. So I wanna share with you these five steps, but I wanna share the opposite. Instead of number one, choices, people that don't practice confidence, people who are keeping themselves away from building confidence, get into indecision. They're questioning everything. They get overwhelmed with all the things they could do and they don't do anything and they don't move. You feel me? I've been there, girl, please. Number two, instead of stepping into courage, which is doing it scared, they let fear take over. Fear will keep you frozen. I say it all the time, don't let your fear freeze you, use it to fuel you. If you're scared, fantastic, use that energy. That nervous and excited is the same thing in your belly, you know that whole, I don't know if you know about that, but 
When you're nervous or you're excited, it's the same feeling of the butterflies in your belly. Tell yourself, I'm excited. I'm nerve sighted, whatever you wanna say, move. Because if you get stuck in fear, you're not moving. Number three, create. Instead of creating a way and making a small step, people that don't step into confidence, they get overwhelmed. They get overwhelmed with what do I do? Oh, I don't know, I don't know. Or they burn out, they do too much, they hustle their way through. They take all this action out of alignment. You take a bunch of action out of alignment, it's not getting you anywhere. So you wanna make sure that you're taking a small step, small little thing, what can you create so you get to move? Number four, which is consider, evaluate. How did it go? Was it good? Was it bad? What did you learn? Instead of doing this, when you're not in your confidence zone, what we do is we procrastinate. We feel like an imposter syndrome. We feel like we're failures. We feel down and out. We're like, oh man, I can't do this. I don't know what to do because I messed up. So I, I shouldn't do that again. You know, you fall down once and then you never ride the horse again. I'm like, you just learned what not to do on the horse. What do you mean? You got skills. If you fell, if you failed, fantastic. This is great. Number five, instead of continuing getting up and going again, people that don't practice confidence, stay down. So you're on the ground bleeding. Oh, look at me, I'm so, so fucking sorry for myself. I'm so falling on the ground. Fantastic, while you sit there feeling sorry for yourself, inaction, you're stagnant, nothing happens. I always say this is the crowbar to your practice of confidence. You have to get back up. You're gonna fall, listen to me. You're gonna fall so much. Of course you're gonna fall, you have to fall. It's part of the process of building confidence. You have to fall down, you have to feel what it feels like to be down so that you get back up and build your resilience. So that you get that agility and you're like, I can do hard things. But we have to experience hard in order to know how to do the hard things. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. You're gonna be so stretched, you're gonna be outside of your comfort zone. This is part of the process, my friend, nothing's wrong. Every single person you look up to that you think is amazing, they have felt exactly how you feel. They have questioned if they're good enough. They have questioned if they should just give up. They have fell on the ground and stayed down and felt fear and lack and self-doubt. Of course we have. That's how you build the confidence. So if that's you right now, the invitation is to get back up, make another choice, make another move, step into your courage, know that you can create a way through, consider how you went and continue again and again. And this is the practice of confidence, my friend. And if you do this, I promise you, you will build the trust with yourself. You will be someone who says what they're gonna do. They do what they're gonna say. They keep their word to themselves. They build their trust. They don't need anybody to back them because they back themselves. And they know that no matter what happens, they are not gonna give up on themselves. That is the key, that is the core to confidence building. So if you enjoyed this episode and you wanna see the five steps and you wanna download the five videos that come with it, just comment the word KIT, K-I-T, go to my Instagram, send me a DM, K-I-T. That's all you gotta send me, you don't gotta send me emojis and you will get the download straight away into your message. I hope that it serves you. I freaking love you. I appreciate you being here. Thank you so damn much. Now go create your confidence, queen.